Anybody got, anybody got the joy of the Lord this morning? Come on. Yeah, see those hands.
Sovereign King, you win every battle, even in the shadow. A gentle father, rich in love, you clothe the orphans and double their portions. Pouring water, the rushing wind, running like a fountain, moving every mountain. Great Jehovah, the architect, Alpha Omega, the holy way maker. Come on, let's sing it out. Unto the great I am, with everything I have. Unto the great I am, I'm singing how great is your name. Unto the great I am, with everything I have. Unto the great I am, I'm singing Got that? A wonder work, the bread of life. We thought it was broken, but heaven tore open. Resurrected and lifted high, risen Messiah, glory in the highest. Unto the great I am, with everything I have.
everything I have unto the great I am. I'm singing how great is your name. Unto the great I am, with everything I have. Unto the great I am, I'm singing how great is your name.
Would you close your eyes? Father, you're so great. Father, we're so thankful for waking up this morning. Like the song said, we have breath in our lungs this morning. What a miracle, God, that we get to be here in your midst, in your presence. Father, we pray that today you would just do what only you could do in our hearts this morning. Father, that you would speak to us, that you would show us who you are, that you would inspire us to be more like you this morning. But above all, God, we're just here to worship you. We're here to say that you're so good and you're so great. Father, we can sing of your love and mercy forever. So, Father, we honor you this morning. Have your way at the way. Have your way in our hearts this morning, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we sing together. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Well, good morning, beautiful people. We're so honored that you're here with us. Well, hey, if there's any youth in the room, all the youth, make some noise. All right, all the parents making the noise for the youth. We'll see you. They're going to transition to their class upstairs. For the rest of us, why don't you look to somebody on your left, somebody on your right, introduce yourself, say hello, get friendly this morning. If you're tuning in online, thanks so much for streaming in. Hope to see you in person one day. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, church. So good to see you today. Wow. What uh, that was, I just felt like I got the biggest hug from Jesus through that worship set. Thank you, worship team. You are amazing. We do not take it for granted the presence of God that is in this place. And listen, if you came here empty, God is going to fill you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to touch you. I just know it, so get ready. But welcome to the Way Family Church. We love it. This Sunday, is, it's so special, but we just wanted to just say hello. If it was your first time walking through those doors, welcome to the Way. You are our VIP guest, and we would love to show you just how thankful we are that you visited us today. If you don't mind after the service going to our connect center you'll see it out there on your left and they want to give them a free gift and say hello to you give you a big hug or handshake whatever you prefer Um, but we just want to say welcome home can we give a round of applause to our vip guests that's so awesome and it was amazing last week we did mention that that we have celebrate recovery as a new ministry and people are interested we had so many sign-ups it's not too late to sign up but also there is an interest meeting if that was you who signed up or you want more information after second service for everyone interested so why don't you go see the connect center and they'll let you know where what room that's in and we welcome you to the team amen Amen. so good so many amazing things are happening here but it doesn't just stop there it keeps on going yes we have our foundations of faith class coming up yay it's it's finally starting oh good it's not too late it's a big class I know, it's, it's I awesome. heard it's being packed out. So yeah. sign up today because class starts this Tuesday. So, so it's great. not too late. Take that time, sign up, whether it's your first time stepping the faith or it's your million time. It's awesome. It's always the best. It's so good. Amen. But as we step into our tithes and our offering, I have the honor and privilege to share on um, a thought today I've been I've uh, had. And I actually want to go ahead and go over this verse before I even explain anything. And it's starting in Proverbs chapter 3, starting from verse 5 all the way to verse 6, where it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. See, when I was growing up all throughout school, I heard this saying that there's two things guaranteed. It's death and it's taxes. And as a kid, I was always like, that's the craziest thing. I'm in the fifth grade. I don't know what any of that means. But I'm here to tell you that there's something even more guaranteed today. It's that God is good and that God is faithful. And it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, to trust in Him. So I don't know where you're sitting at today. I don't know if you're in here for the first time. I don't know if you're in here for the hundredth time. But if God is good, if God is faithful, why don't we put God and let God know? Let's put our trust in Him with our tithes. Let's put our trust in Him with our offering. Because guess what? 
he will always show himself faithful and he will always show himself to be true. So there's three ways to give Way family. The ushers are gonna come around with buckets. There's envelopes on the, uh, behind your seats in your seat back, or you can give on our app and you can scan the QR code above. But why don't you guys pray with me as I pray over our tithes and offerings. God, we thank you for what you're doing this Sunday. God, we thank you that you are good and we thank you that you are faithful. I pray you bless this offering. I pray that you would take us to a deeper depth of trust in you more. I pray that you would bless the rest of this Sunday and lead us to a deeper depth within your presence, God. We love and honor you. We thank you for all that you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. of God to be in this room and be exposed to his wonder, his beauty. The psalmist said, one day in your courts is better. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tent. One moment in your house is I really love that Yahweh, we love you. And I don't want, I want, we should just a quiet reverence, just for a moment, just maybe, but just that Yahweh. I want us to, I want that to be our, not our declaration today, that when he looks on the earth, no matter what, we, 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 we love you. We're devoted to you. We're your people. We'll set up, we're the Daniels. We're, come on, just Yahweh, we love you. By your name, we choose you. Would you just just profess? You profess. You profess your devotion. You profess your love. You profess your allegiance. You all know we 
Say the pledge of allegiance. Not to we're pledge, we pledge allegiance to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Come on, just put just to, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my love you more than the world. We love you. Thank you for allowing us to love you. We are in a real special moment in the presence of God. I feel a real sobriety of just the honest of who he is. Abby said it so well. I feel like there's a big hug from the Lord. Just get your breath back get swallowed in that mercy and grace it drowns your problems stabilizes your fears because in his presence is full my heart is full today um, I have a couple things that I want to say and I, I um, I'm going to just be completely on the only way I know how to be I got a couple things I need to say I need to make an announcement I need to communicate something that I just need to say and then I'm about to share um, a message that I feel way out of my league. Honestly, I feel completely intimidated. I don't even know how to, I've avoided it times past because I don't feel like I have much understanding of it, to be honest. But I've been in a journey with the Lord and it's just become like my walk with Him. And I'm about to share it in just a moment. So I really want you to open your heart and I really believe um, it's an in-season moment and it's an in-season word. I just came today though and I just, um, on behalf of this growing, amazing church, just in the last couple of months, we've seen an increase of two to 300 people online in the last couple of months. Every Sunday, we have four to 500 people online all over watching, and we're so honored to serve you, and thank you for that, and, and the growing, growing church that's here. We're out of parking. We're out of room. Just so thankful for all the expansion, soul saved, all. We just, to God be the glory. To God be all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Thank you, Lord. But one thing, I, I just just thankful we can do it as a family you know my loving supportive wife and our children some are here some are in or out they'll be here trust us we love we, we trust us they will be here if they want to eat they'll be here the son his family leads worship We've got my in-laws on one side and my mom and dad on the other side aunts and uncles here my my uncle my uncle's look the best 75 looking year old man you've ever seen he's sharp he's handsome he's but we also have a family friend here, and I want to just honor uh, Bill Wright. Thank you for coming, Bill. We love you, part of our family. And would you stand out? We want to honor you today. Tell him we love him. He's a great man. I love my family. Before I get to the word, um, I want to just say something to you, just to be honest and be frank, just to let you know. Only if you consider this your church, if you consider this home and family, if you've been, <laughs> thank you. We, we should pay you because you like help carry the crowd. You carry the whole t crowd every time. You know that? You do. And your zeal, your zeal. If you only consider this your home church online, if this is your church, your family, you're, you're bought in here, just want to let you know that we do have a need. That's not, 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 not anything we can't do, not anything we can't see, but we do. We do have a fiscal, financial need of a church. And uh, we as a ministry uh, do everything we can to budget and to be as fiscally responsible as possible. In fact, we use a company that's just above reproach in every way. They are phenomenal. 
And we as a ministry don't operate in debt. We, we really streamline things. We operate cash. We don't have, we have one little emergency thing of need, but we operate really as best as we can in a biblical way. And we have had to, been forced to reduce, reduce budget, reduce budget, reduce budget, because we live in California and inflation is like astronomical and things are tough, but we do, we have a need. We have a need. We have a need. We have about a $50,000 deficit of our budget that we're at. And that's what that's reducing. I don't know how God's going to do it. But you know, I used to carry this church like on me, almost killed me. But I don't anymore. I don't anymore. Because I know, I know that I am called to pray, live right, study his word, love my family, and lead this church with everything I have. And I can honestly, in my, all my imperfections, like I, I got nothing, no guile. I'm honestly, I poured it all out. I, I, I've done everything I know to do for this church, to pray, to be a man of God, to lead this ministry. So if it's God's will, it's God's bill. And I know that God's our resource, but I know that God's our resource. God is our source and man's our resource. So if you're here today and you can help meet that today, we need it today. We need that, we need that, 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 that thing met just to keep things going where we are. Amen. It's not going to anything frivolous. It's going to the work of the ministry. We've had to come off the radio. We've had to we just keep cutting costs, cutting costs. But now we're down to just making it. So I'm fully confident. So if you've been withholding for fear, for anything else, you're like, where's the need? Look no further. Because this beautiful church and beautiful ministry is, is, is taken care of. The government doesn't help us. We get no other help. The only ones is by the goodness of God and the free will giving of people. And I have to be honest with you. If you care about this ministry, then just do your part. That's all I say. And we are above, above and beyond in our giving. Even have had to cut our own personal recently to keep things moving so you don't feel it. But there's a need. And the Lord is our shepherd. And he'll use this place. If you're a part of this church, Amen. Some can do five dollars. Some could probably hit fifty thousand. Not even feel it. Some could do a hundred. But but and, and I'm just one more thing for getting the word. I'm not just believing for fifty. I'm believing for some room to do what God, we have vision. We have things we want to do, and resources help funnel us that. Lord, I'm just thankful for what you've done in me. This stuff used to be so big. But it's not as much anymore, and I'm thankful for the work you've done in this young man. I still feel like a child. And so again, I felt you led me to just be honest, and so I've communicated. Thank you, you've brought us this far, and I thank you that where we are today, that you have a plan. And I don't just ask for the need to catch us up. I ask for Jehovah Jireh. I ask for the Lord El Shaddai to make a way today to all the hundreds of people in this room and online that their hearts would be compelled. We know that giving says so much about people. Giving reveals the heart of people. And I pray today that every need is met. In Jesus' name, amen. Grab a seat, you guys. Love you so much. Thank you. Do you have your Bible today real quick? Genesis chapter 32. In all my years of preaching, I've been privileged to preach nearly two decades now, and Abby still listens to me every time. It's amazing. I'm so thankful. That's the, what a wonder. <laughs> She'll still look at me in the morning and say, babe, da, da, da. Abby ran in the other day. We were getting ready to go out. And uh, she ran in. She's so excited. She was beaming. She goes, oh, my gosh, I just saw on the news. I'm like, braced. She said, you'll never believe it, babe. Guess. I'm like, our deficit of the nation's gone down. I mean, what? Well, uh, she said, the news said skinny jeans are coming back. I said, well, I told you, I'm prophetic. I told you so. Everybody else went with the wave. I stood strong. That should show you. I know it's coming. It's a true story. Come on, Talon, it's time. Okay, it's time. Look at these guys, like gangster thuggish. Come on, it's time. I said, thank you, Lord. I just, here's what I do. I just don't ever shop. They are just so old. I just keep them just stylish. <laughs> I got buttons ripping off and everything. <laughs> Amen. Genesis 32, 
in all these years of preaching, to my knowledge, outside of a prayer meeting, I have never dealt with this. I feel totally out of my pay grade. I feel it's totally beyond me, honestly, so bear with me. Please be patient, and I'm hoping this comes out correctly. What we're going to discover here, um, the next 43 minutes, I don't know how we're going to budget this time in. Uh, in Genesis 32, is, uh, we're exposed to, to my opinion, one of the most unique and sacred, rare biblical stories there are. It's an encounter with Jacob, the son of Isaac, and the grandson of Abraham. And we see in this story and in this situation where God himself is wrestling with man. I have not been able to budget or calculate that. The holiness of God coming to planet earth and wrestling with a man. It's historically known as Jacob's crisis because after 20 years, after 20 years of separation, the twin brothers, Esau and Jacob, have been separated based upon a severe traumatic and traumatizing situation. Every family on earth is dysfunctional because we're humans, but not every family has trauma and traumatic situations. Every one of us have dysfunction because we're not perfect. But not every family has trauma and toxic situations. This family just wasn't dysfunctional. They had trauma. So after 20 years, Jacob, by the word of the Lord, is going to leave his father-in-law's home and going to go meet Esau for the first time and hopefully reconcile things. If you read on from the story, it's one of the most beautiful things of reconciliation. It's one of the most hopeful stories. What happened is at birth, Jacob, his origin, the name of Jacob, means heel catcher, cheater, deceiver, manipulator, supplanter, like all of our resumes. I just want to break the ice today. This is all, we all fit into this category. You may not be the manipulator, but you're the cheater, okay? You're, we're all, because this is human. I think Jacob rep, rec, represents humanity. We're Jacob. We're, we're Jacob. Everyone just don't shift the blame. Welcome. We are Jacob. I'm Jacob. You're Jacob. Different sides of it. It comes out in different ways, but we all got a bit of Jacob in us. His name is used 150 times in scripture. He's a younger son of Isaac and Rebecca, and he tricked, completely manipulated and tricked Esau into selling his birthright. Jacob deceived his brother and stole his birthright in order to receive the family's blessing because he didn't think God was big enough to do it for him too. Jacob married Leah, Rachel, had 12 sons. And the beautifulness of this story is in the conclusion of Genesis 33 of restoration. Genesis chapter one, Excuse me, Genesis 32, verse 1. Now Jacob went on his way. Remember, he's going to meet Esau. That's the crisis. And the angels of God met him. I want to stop for just a moment because so many times, even in church settings and in life, we don't often um, become aware of the spiritual reality of this. But Jacob was going on a journey to meet his brother, and the angels of God were with him. I just want to stop for just a moment. Listen, church, it's not as natural as you think. You have a heavenly host with you. You have angels assigned to your life. And everywhere we're going, no matter what you feel on your job and your day, I'm telling you, in the realm of the spirit, there are more with us than are with them. There's heavens all around us. There's angels. There's a shadow of Shaddai. This thing is powerful, guys. It's not just normal and natural. No, when we go, my goodness, if we could see in the realm of the spirit, God sings songs of deliverance, Psalm 32. And I just want to let you know, today's spiritual. And this service is spiritual. It's not just natural. There are things happening in the realm of the spirit that are powerful, that are glorious, that are great. And my Bible says God gives his angels charge over you. And angels are heirs to the, angels are servants to the heirs of salvation. We're not alone, friends. And just like Jacob had a heavenly host and a cloud of witnesses, so do every time your kids, whatever the situation, there's a spiritual host with us. Are you thankful for that? Say, I'm never alone. Verse two, when Jacob saw them, he said, he said, this is God's camp. This is God's camp. 
And he called the name of that place, and Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau. Verse 24, I'm skipping now over. I'll get to that in just a moment. Verse 24. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, of Jacob's hip, which was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And Jacob says, Jacob, to identify that. He said, your name will no longer be called Jacob. I will call you Israel, striver with God. But it really means now God rules or God reigns or God has now supremacy. For you have struggled with God in me and have prevailed. Mm. Then Jacob said, tell me your name, I pray. He said, "Um, what is it that you ask about me? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name place called excuse me called the name of that place Panel. For I have seen God face to face. I don't know how to rectify all that because we know that no one has seen God at any time. So I don't know all the details of this. Let's just take it for what it is. He wrestled with God, and you preserve me. Just as he crossed over Panel, the sun arose. The sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, what happened in Jacob affected generations. What happened in that encounter affected generations to this day. What God wants to do in you is not just a Sunday. He wants to so touch your life that it changes everyone around you. That there's a legacy established that it affects everyone in your sphere. That encounter changed everyone even to this day. They don't eat that part of the, they don't eat that part. They they reverence it. Because he touched me, the socket of my hip. Lord, thank you for this moment. I want to speak today on this thought and this title, At God's Camp. If you're taking notes, write that down, At God's Camp. Or this is God's Camp. I know m- many of you love the outdoors and camping and all those things. I'm not that. I- I'm the air conditioning kind of weak guy. Sissy boy, I guess what you call it. I don't know. <laughs> you're the real people, you know, like the mosquitoes and you get all eaten up. And you're awesome. You're amazing. Just tell me when to eat and where the boat's going. I'll be there. I'm good. I'm fun. I'll entertain, but I just don't, you know, I want a, I want a nice shower. I better when I'm showered. <laughs> what takes place at God's camp happens nowhere else. Not in education. Not on your job. Not in your sphere. It's a very sacred place when God brings you to his camp. Campground. So we begin this morning, there's a beautiful prayer uh, that we like to pray a lot. It's a famous prayer. It's in First Chronicles chapter 4. It's by the young boy, of an, a young man by the name of uh, Jabez. And it says that when he was born in pain, he prayed this prayer to God and God heard him. And this was his prayer. J- Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And he, and, and he was born in pain. And it says, and, and Jabez prayed to the Lord. He said, oh God, that you'd bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, that you, that you would keep me from evil, that your hand would be upon me, that it may not cause pain. Would you just open your mouth this morning and say, Lord, touch me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Let your hand be upon me. Keep me from evil. I don't want to cause pain. Lord, touch me. Significant. Reach the areas that have not been reached yet. Expand my vision. Expand me. Let your hand be upon me. Keep me from evil. Jesus name. Today I have the distinguished privilege on behalf of heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the heavenly host and the great cloud of witnesses. I stand before you today with my hand in the Bible and I want to personally welcome and invite all of you to God's camp. I know. I want to welcome you to God's camp land. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on into the camp plan. I'm your tour guide, and I'm new at all this, but just hang in there with me. We're all on a journey and on an adventure. We've never been here before, but we know the author and finisher of our faith. God's Genesis 32 to me is presented to all of us as the most clear, real, and raw relationship with God that it looks like. 
Some of us get so religious and think, well, that would not have any part. If I love God, there'd be no struggle. There'd be no wrestling wrong. This to me is really how it is if you want to walk with God. Let me just burst any religious bubble. If you really want to walk with God, welcome to Genesis 32. It's not as easy and pretty as you think. Sometimes it looks a lot like, how you doing? I'm in God's camp land. A whole lot going on here. Some struggling, some wrestling, all kinds of crazy stuff. But I love Jesus and I'm following the Lord. Welcome to walking with Jehovah. If you think it's just this pretty, unshaken, quiet, you got a whole nother thing coming, brother and sister, because this thing is shake, rattles, and rolls. Honestly, I think we have a lot of preten- false pretense walking with God. And we sometimes put such a religious facade on people that because they're in situations, we're like, how could you? Really? Like, you're not either? <laughs> Just because you're not in my wrestle doesn't mean you're not in your own wrestle. We're all in an area of some kind of wrestle. Just because your problem isn't my problem doesn't mean I don't have a problem. Let's just remove the religious facade. And remember how good God's been to get you to where you are. Honestly, what we learn and what we're exposed to here, it takes my breath away about God. I just don't understand Holy deity coming to earth, getting involved in this man's problem and staying with him until he's done. What a God. What a wonder. What a miracle. Not aloof, not distant, not preabsorbed, but right in the middle of his crisis. The holy son of God. We see his nature and his character in the most amazing way. Much like the woman caught in adultery, he bows his knee and writes in the dirt. Jesus is in everything you're going through. He's in the midst of the dirtiest, messiest. He's not just waiting for you to arrive in some place of perfection. He's right in the midst of everything of your life. And if you don't know that Jesus, you got to get to know the real, authentic God. He comes to man's level and wrestles with him. He didn't take him up. He came to earth. This is incredible to me and leaves me speechless um, because it's hard to fully articulate and define this. And I'm not a theologian and I'm not all that. I'm just a a shepherd who loves God. But man, I see such relational and realness with God. I see relationship. I see relationship right here, don't you? I see, rela- and I see realness. God knows it all, and he's at the realest, authentic level. I can follow him with that. I-, I see accessibility. God is accessible, and he's personal. It's not just corporate. It's one-on-one. It's one-on-one. I, I see that God gets to our level, and I see that it- he invites us and beckles us in to wrestle. When I was, uh, I'm probably the greatest title I can carry it's husband and father and uh, two boys two girls and now grandbaby but, but these boys know like one of the best things to do Abby won't do it anymore let's wrestle with these boys you know it's fun to wrestle isn't it like just mess around like God wants to wrestle with them man let's just isn't that amazing I try to do it with Abby every once in a while and she's just too fast she just gets skirts away the Lord himself is in the midst of your struggle the midst of your pain, right there in the midst of your crisis. Can I just say something to you? Don't leave the camp early. I know you're tempted to go get that air conditioning room and say, forget, no, 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 stay in camp. Don't, don't leave camp early. Don't, don't buck the system, guys. It's not done yet. Stay in the tension of the camp. Stay in the struggle of the challenge. Stay in the midst Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. One of the major glaring facts, truths, and realities presented here that we must address on the onset is this. There are some things in this life that we need and desire 
that only God himself is, has, and can do. I want to say that again. The glaring truth of this story tells me, like it's telling Jacob, there are some things in this life that we want and need that only God is, has, and can do. You can't find it in man because only he can do some things in, and I'm okay with telling you it goes beyond God wants a, he has a reserve section that only he can do for you these things. Only God can touch, fulfill, and complete some things in your life. Esau can't do it. And that's okay. We can rest in that. The Lord has it reserved. It's impossible to find everything in man. Your spouse, your church, your pastor. There's only some things in Jesus. Humanity will never fulfill you completely. Your job, your, it will never. Ecclesiastic says you're born with a hole in your heart of eternity. Billy Graham said everyone has a hole that only God can fill. You keep trying to fill it. Man can never fulfill it. There's only some things that Jesus can fulfill. And God's perfectly allow, allowing you to wrestle and try to find everything until you realize he's the completer and the fulfiller of it all. Because you can scratch that itch and realize no fulfillment, no fulfillment, no fulfill, partial fulfillment, but only he can fulfill the quench of mankind. The appetite. Or else you'll always be hunger, hungry in the will of God for the wrong things. If he never fills your appetite, you're always hungering for the wrong thing at the wrong time. You have an appetite for the world to fill something that only Jesus can fill. What I need, Lord, and I'm telling this from you. Say that. What I need is from you. Let's get real today. Let's be honest. Let's go to another level. Lord, what I need is from you. And I'm sorry if I kept looking to man all the time. What I want's from you. Man doesn't possess this from me. Man can't get me to where you're taking me. Man doesn't have it. My promotion does not come from man. This is God's camp. Church, body of Christ, those at the sound of my voice, here's the disclaimer. This is not Jacob's story. It's not Israel's story. It's my story. It's your story. Jacob represents all of us, the dysfunction of humanity, the struggle of humanity. All of us have things we've done in our past. All of us have things we're walking through. It's not just their story, it's our story. And you better find yourself in this story so you can embrace what God wants to do in this season of your life. And in my humble opinion, walking with Jesus Christ, being in Christ, this never ends. Different seasons, different ways. But it's a continual process of going to new places in Jesus. You say, well, I graduated from that camp land. Yeah, but there's probably another camp land that God's brought you into. We never, in my opinion, graduate from this walk with God. We are saved. Oh, my gosh. Saved? Saved? You were purchased with the atoning lamb of God, the blood of Jesus Christ. God bought you and you were purchased and God adopted you as a son and daughter with the shed blood of Jesus. You are now chosen. You are selected. You're no longer an outsider, an orphan, a widow. You are the, fa you are the family. You're, you are, you are, you, you were adopted by God and he brought you in now as a family. You're saved, regenerated by the spirit. And you're sanctified. In that moment, you're made righteous. You're now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But not only are you saved and sanctified, we now live in a duality of we're saved and being sanctified. Because the process of sanctification, we inherit the righteousness of God, but then we go into the place where God is now sanctifying us into his nature. So we're saved and being sanctified. No one here is fully sanctified. We're in the process of sanctification while being made righteous. It's the work of the Spirit. For by one offering you've been perfected. Those who are being sanctified. He's being sanctified. Jacob was being. Hebrews 2.11. For he who sanctifies of those who are being sanctified are all in one. You get the, we're saved, sanctified, and being sanctified. 
No one has ever or will ever fully arrive on planet Earth. I love how in this scripture, it's so fascinating to me, it touches me that as I somewhat study and know scripture, I'm fascinated that God in scripture is known as the God of Jacob. No, 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 you missed, I gotta help you with this. Jacob, deceiver. Manip- Jacob's like got the worst history and God in scripture is known as the God of Jacob meaning God on your worst day on your worst moment is still your father he's still good he's still he's the God of Jacob and Israel that to me is the most facet God's the God on your worst day is still God on your worst day is still good and the worst moment of your life is still in the midst of that the God of Jacob If I was God, I would not be identified with some of your mess. Like, they go to your church? No, not my church. No, they go to that church. Because we never want to identify with people's worst moments. In fact, now we have this weird plastic thing that when someone's going through something, we just all back up. I don't know. Why? Shouldn't we run too and cover and To him who are... Strong, help the weak. Strength is for service, not for status. We're like in this place now. I don't want to touch anything there. God says, I'm the God of Jacob. Whoa. Identifying himself with me in my worst moments. I'm father of you, whatever you've done. In your worst moment, my son, my daughter, I'm at work. Hold on just a moment. What a God. Psalms 20, verse 1, may the God, may the Lord answer you, and may the God of Jacob defend you, just like he defended Jacob. May the God of Jacob. That's the Bible. Whoo, may he send you help. Did you get the understanding of that church? Doesn't it make you want to love him more and run around the building and tell the tell the world about God? So today I pray. In this spirit-induced environment, under the anointing of God with the word of the Lord, church and family online and in person, may the God of Jacob defend you. May the God of Jacob protect you. May the God of Jacob provide for you. May the God of Jacob send in. May the God of Jacob make a way for you where there seems to be no way. May the God of Jacob defend them. May the God of Jacob answer you in the day of your trouble. So never let your heart be troubled, church, and where you are and what season you're in. Always take heart. Always be filled with joy and peace in the spirit, believing in God. Always be of good cheer. Always cheer up. Jesus said, never let your heart be troubled. No matter what season you're in, Jacob, never take on trouble. Never take it too deep. Never bear that thing. It's beyond you. Because Jesus Christ has overcome the world, and thanks be to God that victory comes through Jesus Christ in every moment. Praise the Lord. As technology continues to expand and explode, transforming all of our worlds and our lives, leaving some of us older people behind, It's established today that concerning smartphones, the internet, Google, and AI, knowledge through technology is doubling every 12 hours. I want to be very clear up here. I have nothing to do with it. I don't speak to it. I, I, in my case, my conviction, every message I get, I have to write with the Lord. I have to study it. I've never used, to me, for this sacred moment, help in any way. And before I stand before you, I wouldn't have the conscience to take a word of God from any other source other than from me with studying it out. So I just want you to know that. I know a big trend right now is it's very hard to study and speak every week, so they can just download something in eight seconds. I just, if I do that, it's time to do something else. If, if God's not speaking to me, any, I just want to say that to you. And she, if, 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 I'm not, if God's not speaking to me anymore, then i got to find something else. Amen? And use AI for that. But this is holy and sacred. Amen. So we're doubling every 12 hours. In, com- in comparison up to the 1900s, human knowledge doubled every century, every 100 years. 
Daniel in Daniel 12, 4, uh, but Daniel shut up the book until the time of the end and knowledge shall increase. So you don't need to be too deep, but the, the rapid rate knowledge is increasing. We are in the time of the end. This is the time of the end with the expansion of knowledge through technology. Knowledge is expanding through technology. On October 4th, 2011, it was announced to the world the day before Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was the inventor, the investor best known for the co-funding and technology company of Apple. Right before his death, he released on October 12th, 2011, something very significant that changed the world. A new technology called find your friends, share your location with your family and friends. This has changed everything. This technology allows people to be in constant accountability with their family and friends all times. It helps criminal activities, accountability, parenting, parenting, parenting. It removes lying and deception. It keeps you honest and it causes much trauma in families and friends because now you can locate where they are at every moment. What did we do before we found your location? We were at a football game for a night. The mom ahead of me pulled out her phone. The dad goes, where are they? She pulled it out in 30 seconds. Bing, bing, called her up. You're not at the right place. Mom, relax. I'm at the gas station. I think if you could pin us and find our location today, God would say you're in my camp. Your location reads. Ping. Where are you? Ping. Don't run. You're in God's camp. You're right here. That's our location. He hasn't all arrived yet. A little bit raw. But if we could ping your location, you'd be right with God in the place of find my location. I'm at God's camp. I'm at God's campground. And I don't know it all yet, but he's doing something. I don't know where I'm going yet, but he's at work. I'm at God's camp. Don't leave your location. It's uncomfortable. It's awkward. There's tension. Stay. Pinned. God's. This ministry's at God's camp. The nation's at God's camp. The world's at God's camp. And he's doing something mighty in the land. Church, body of Christ, the bride, the people, the ministers, we find ourselves in a place now face to face with God. For so long, we weren't face to face. We we're on the outer courts, man. We just got by. But guess what the Lord's doing now? He loves you so much, he's bringing you close now. I need you to get this. I need you to hear this today. At God's camp, we're not at a distance. We get brought close to close with him. You know why everything's getting exposed right now? Because at God's camp, God exposes stuff. Why? Because stuff has to change. You know what happens at God's camp? You break and you have to find surrender. He breaks you of things that held you captive for years. This is, this is Abraham's grandson and Isaac's son. There's no greater heritage in the Bible. God's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's in the fold. Yet he's got so many deep issues that God says, we can't go on to Esau until I break this off. You know what God's doing in the earth, in my humble opinion right now? Breaking us, not of natural service things, deep soulish issues that have his people in bondage. Deep things that must be, things you picked up, habits you picked up, things you learned that were not him. You learn this from this, you learn this from that, and you got all these internal dysfunctional things that are keeping you captive, and now God loves you enough to do a deep work in you, to break you from everything that's keeping you bound. At God's camp, bondages break off. At God's camp, there's transformation. It's not just a sermon and three cute songs. It's a transformation that changes generations. At God's camp, it's exposure. He shows you things you may not want to see. Whoa, that was there? That was me? I used to talk like that. I've got that pride because I'm the professional. You got that, man. Get that thing out of your eye. But didn't Jesus say, you're so fascinated on what's in, you got to, 
You got a plank. You love their spec. You're the spec expert. I was a professional spec expert. And Jesus goes, you got a plank the size of... At God's camp, he tries to reveal things you can't see. We all got blind spots. And the quicker you take out those big things in your life, then you can help see things with Esau change. At God's camp, it's honesty. Can I just tell you something about God? Just get honest. I mean, I'm struggling, man. We're not making, like, I, I have a confession of faith that, that I almost stripped my lungs of my, con- you, you, I mean, we, are you kidding me? There's not a louder house in this valley than our house. But let's be honest. Struggling. Let's be real. God loves real. He loves authentic. And so do people. And so does the world. I think one of the worst things we've done as witnesses to the world is we're not real. Like we've never had a problem. Like I met Jesus, red carpet ride, I've never, whoa. No. I'm walking with, I got a big limp. (laughs) This thing's getting bigger. He's merciful, but I'm in the process of being, let's be honest, let's be real. At God's camp, it's all about transparency. (laughs) <laughs> no more covering it up. No more cover up. Ah, the church right now is in a scary place. What we've covered up has been for good. At God's camp, God goes, yeah, I covered it up. Now I'm going to. It's okay, though, if it's good. And it's all intended for good. But at God's camp, no more cover ups. Is this too heavy for you? Is this real? This is the realest message I've ever preached in my entire life. Till next week. And it's been six days. And I got my skinny jeans on and Abby's got her fashion jeans on. Oh my gosh! At God's camp, he comes as a consuming fire and he prunes and he refines and he loves you enough to discipline you. He disciplines you. Because if he didn't love Jacob, he wouldn't discipline him because you're illegitimate if you're not in the discipline. So he cares enough about you to say, hey, I love you enough. If you don't run, to hang in here and let me father you like a father does. Like recently, last time you told me I'm carrying this ministry completely wrong. I was carrying this ministry in a different burden, not in the spirit. I was carrying it in a different way. So it nearly took my, I have had to readjust everything in my, still love, still burden, but it's a different place in him. It's a rest in him. It's not a weight. It's a burden, but not a weight. I was carrying the weight of the weight. I can't care. That's not for me to care. I got to cast my cares, but I have to carry the burden that he gives me for the people. So that's for me. (laughs) At God's camp is where you get transformed. It's radical. There's major breakthroughs. And let me tell you, when you go through these things, your children will thank God for it. Your generations will thank God for it. They didn't eat that part anymore because of what Jacob went through touched generations. And let me tell you, God wants to do such a legacy in your life that's not just a service, but what you do with him, your obedience to him, touches generations to come. You're the byproduct of what people walk through with God. He said, let me go for the day breaks. He said, I will not let you go unless you change me, bless me. I'm not. At God's camp, the angels of God are involved. Just like in Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bow their knee and serve their their, their, uh Baal worship the Babylonians so Nebuchadnezzar comes and they would throw people in the fire he goes turn it up seven times turn it up seven times seven times seven times seven times 
takes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throws them in the fire. The fire is so hot that the guardians who throw them in burn and die. Yet in the midst of the fire, they said, oh my gosh, we see the fourth man in the fire. I'm here to tell you in the midst of your fire, the son of God, the Lord is at work in the midst of your fire. You're, you're being refined, but you won't die. You're being changed, but you're still alive. You're in the midst of a fire, but God's still at work. That fire was turned up so, get ready, it may get worse and worse and worse, but the Lord is in the midst of the fire. And they come out without a, that's what God's doing. God's camp, the word means double, meaning it serves a duality, a purpose, spiritual and natural. It's for many times and many seasons and many reasons. So God always uses the camp for, for, for reasons of your life. Camp, and so is walking with Jesus, and so is family. It's messy. Can I just say this to you? Wherever there's people, there's problems, because people have problems, period. Can you believe what they're going through? Yeah, it's people. Can you believe we're having that church? Yeah, it's led by people. So just get embracing that wherever there are sheep, there will be dung heap. That just came. I'm starting to rap. I feel in a rap anointing. I don't know. I just may go into now this. I don't know. Just like, you're okay, Holy Spirit. You're the ra- <laughs> Wherever there's sheep, there's going to be. Just get used to it. And there's a whole lot of shaking going on, and the shaking will continue because everything that can be shaken. And you know what God wants you not to look at the things of this world as your source and resource. He's trying to get your attention. Look up to the hills. That's where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. The looking unto Jesus. Because the shaking will continue naturally and spiritually. It's shaking at camp. Hang in there. Know your footing, know your foundation. Oh, there's such a tension to manage. You got to manage the tension of struggle, conflict, and affliction and blessing at the camp. It's a tension. There's spiritual and natural crisis is taking place. It's mysterious. It can feel confusing and fuzzy. What's going on? You know what? I don't know. Like, it's okay to walk with God by faith and not by sight. Like, I I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but I know he's good. It is a bit confusing. If you're in that moment with Jacob, you don't have all the answers. I love what Paul says. For now we see dimly in a mirror, but then face to face. I know in part, I see in part, just as I'm known. Sometimes all you have is the part you need. And and whoever says they have the whole part, that's not faith. You have a little part that you need. I got enough right now to know. I see in part, I know in part. I just have just enough right now to get me to where I'm going. We see in part, we know in part, and we walk by faith. But the part you have is enough to know. Stay in the tension. It doesn't feel permanent. It feels so transitional. It feels like at any moment things could change. What's real? What's not? Who's with me? Who's not? Where's it going to come from? I mean, this is me. Because it feels so transitional. Because it's temporary. And God doesn't want you to feel so permanent in a season of life that you're passing through. It's okay to feel the sense of, hold it with open hands. It's okay to feel the sense, freely I have, freely I give. It's okay to feel a sense of tension. It's so vulnerable, you're so exposed, and you're alone. And you know what happens here? It's emotional. My neighbor, he hasn't come to church yet. He will in Jesus' name. I don't know where he's at with the Lord, but we have our Jesus loves you sign, and we do our best. We're just, we here we are. I walked over the other day because we're growing in our relationship. He's a camp guy. Like, I admire This is a man's man. Like, I want him to be my mentor, you know? Like, would you help me? Would you teach you? How do I change a light bulb? <laughs> I mean, I am that guy. <laughs> no, I'm getting better. I'm in transition. I'm getting so much better. Man, I got my bladder at home. I've got, I mean, I'm, I'm styling. I walk over to him. I said, how's it going? He's emotional. I said, man, we're taking my son to school. I said, no way. Yeah, our oldest to college. How do you feel? And I saw the quiver. 
I, I don't know how I feel. Guys, life is way more emotional than we know. We, we, there's a lot of feelings. I'm nostalgic. I can reminisce. Like, gosh, I am sad about some things, you know? So I'm like, I, and I'm happy. Like, there's emotion. On one end, we got a beautiful granny but on the other end, we're like empty nesters now. And it's like, whoa, like, on one end, the church has never been greater. But on the other end, I'm having to say no to things. This is emotion. On one end, you see the friends you have, but on the other end, you don't see, you wonder where they went. On, on one end, you wish they were here to see this moment, but they're not here to see. On one end, I feel more strong and more anointed than ever, but on the other end, I feel weaker than I've ever felt. On one end, I feel like I have no clue of the word. On another end, I feel like I got clarity. On one end, I have no idea, but on the other end, I feel... And if you're not being honest, you're not walking with God because there's so much. You love the addition, but it cut into your life. We love the building, but we can't for the pants. This. You love the job, but there's no believers there. I love pastoring, but it's so hard. You love your marriage, but there's so much attack. So emotional. We're getting older, life's changing, and now you got technology like share your location. We don't talk anymore, we don't call on the phone anymore. We we've lost so much personal touch because technology has separated us even further, and now we have people that consider this their home church, and we haven't seen them in years. We love you, we care about you, but I want to touch you too. Because technology has separated us from how are you? You good? I care about you. Let me give you my voice. How are you doing? How are you? You doing you. Happy birthday. I love you. I care about you. It's okay to cry. It's okay to get honest with God. Read the Psalms, here's my, be real. Not with everybody, but with some places be real. And if someone's being vulnerable with you, do not pick up a stone that you don't have and cast it to them. That is religion. Why don't you bend a knee too and say, hey, I've been there, man. Hold on, hold on, listen. Yeah, I know, God's brought me through. And why don't you, through humility, share a story of redemption that says how you were down, but God made a way for you. I'm with you. I wish it was easy. God is good. Life can be hard. There's things I cannot explain. There's mysteries. I struggle with mysteries. I struggle with mysteries to this day. There are things I felt him tell me that I... You said that. Is that this? I, be, well, he speaks God. So he may call this a nation, and I may call, I don't know, you're God. Think about it. He speaks God. I am. He tells Moses, just go tell him, I am. Well, who are you? I am that I am. I am the healer. I am the redeemer. I, I am that I am that I am. I am everything you need me. I am God. I am enough. I am more than enough. I'm a friend. I'm a helper. I am the Lord. I am everything you need me to be. Whenever you need me to be it. We just, I think, have stepped into a two, three-part series on this message. When Jacob's going to meet his brother Esau, remember, that's what they, the story's about, him and Esau. It wasn't, though. I want to stop here for just a moment and hopefully help you. Some of your trauma is not with people. I know you think it is. I know you think it's how you're raised. I, I understand. I understand the abuse. I get it. But there's some things in your life that you have the wrong perspective for. It's not getting it right with them or getting healing from them. You have to go to a place in God. And own, I got to stop here for just a moment. Esau was not going to heal Jacob. But you think he will. Because if it just was different, if you weren't adopted, and a lot of people live in the prism of the wrong perspective, 
if I didn't have that pastor, if I wasn't overlooked, if I got picked for the team, it's not with people. Church, the Lord has your healing, but you can never be restored with Esau until you get healed in your heart. And so many people think the problem's here. I'm not your problem. The church, listen, the devil, the church is not the problem, but the devil has done everything he can to assault the church and preachers. Who can you trust anymore? Well, you always should have put your trust in the Lord and know what God's called you to. Listen, you think it's about Esau. If my daddy, if my mom, I know, I'm, I mean, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. But at some point, it's beyond that. And you keep thinking it's just you and Esau. And you have the wrong, if you keep singing, going back to that moment and talking about that, you are missing what God wants to do. Let me tell you, it's not just with you and man. It's not how your dad abused you. I'm sorry, but God can heal that because he's the father. And I'm just here to tell you, God is bigger than what you've gone through. And what does he tell Jacob? You cannot go to Esau. You cannot go to Esau until I visit you. Because I got to, hear this, don't miss this. I got to touch you. And I think the churches keep looking for man. Touch me, pastor. Give me a word. It's beyond me. And I come to the place. This is where I'm at. I finally said, forget it. Where I'm at. This is a God problem. It's way bigger than me. And there's a place in God you got to get. Instead of saying just here and fighting back and forth and looking at the issue and go to God. I mean, go to God like, I mean, get a hold of God. I mean, I'm not talking Sunday. I'm talking alone. I'm talking Jesus. You know. And there's a place in God that God wants to take you that transforms every hurt, every pain, every mindset, everything of abuse, that all of a sudden takes you from being Jacob to transform you to becoming Israel. I'm just, just, just listen, listen. Not everyone will do it because it's uncomfortable. But I'm down for it, I'm, I'm in. Because I've come to the conclusion that the times I had with God aren't enough for today. I've come to a conclusion. A new day needs a new encounter. I've come to the conclusion some things first have to break in me before they break around me. I've come to the conclusion if God doesn't have it, I don't want it. I've come to the conclusion that if he doesn't touch it, I just want to help you today. Maybe in your marriage, maybe around. You've looked through the wrong lens because you see, keep seeing the person. It's not. If you let go of Esau and Jacob, God steps in. And in Genesis 32, 33, Esau runs, Jacob runs, and Jacob has a gift. And he goes, I don't want your gift. I want my brother back because when God heals something, there is no more bitterness. You're no longer a victim because Jehovah, the Lord. And you just want to celebrate. Do you know that Jacob, it says in, in Genesis 32, he was so greatly afraid and distressed. When I'm talking about emotion, this is how Jacob felt. He was not this mighty man. His knees were missing. Do it scared. <laughs> Pastor, have you ever done anything scared? There's nothing I have not done. That's not, there's nothing I did that wasn't being a little scared. You feel it, but faith is, there's nothing I've done that I didn't have to feel. Like this could go two ways. You gotta lean into that thing. Jacob was greatly afraid. He, it says, my brother's going to attack me and kill me. This is his emotion. He says, Lord, deliver me from the hand of my brother. He had all the wrong conception. He thought he was done. But when he leaned to that emotion, this is how Paul said it. We have a treasure in earthen vessels. 
Come on, what a treasure we have. Look around us. What a treasure. What a treasure. And you, you Martin, you're such a treasure. Such, these guys, these, I, I pull up to the parking lot. And they, they, they love on me. They care. What a treasure. They don't know, but what a treasure to have friends and people. What a treasure to have God's presence. What a treasure to have a word. What a treasure to have an amazing wife. What a treasure to do it with my, what a treasure. What a treasure to have my, what a treasure. What to have a car and get gas and live. What a treasure. But Paul says we have a treasure that the excellence of God may be revealed. That the excellence of the power, but, but here, here it is, we have a treasure, but here's how it really looks. Go to that next verse, please. I, I need you up to verse seven, please. I know I'm, verse seven. That the power may be of God, not of us. Sometimes God wants to bring you to the place where you finally go, I used to be able to do it, I can't now. I used to be able to lead it, I can't now. I used to be able to, and there's things inside of me I felt like, not anymore. I can't go, there's no grace for it. Because he's changed me that it's not my power, it's his power. Now I'm weak and he can be strong. Now I'm more broken. So there's a place that I have to die more, that he can come alive more. And now Paul says that the power of God might be revealed in my weakness. Look what God did. And here it is. Next verse. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Do you see the emotional tension? We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the dying of the Lord, that he may be manifest. Wow, there's two, I, I'm dying, but he's coming alive. I feel like we're not gonna make it, but he's doing the greatest things. I feel like I'm losing it. But he's doing more. It's the tension of walking with Jesus. I feel more, feel more unsettled now. But there's a greater anointing now than ever. It's because that's how God works. Lean into the camp. This is, I'm going to teach the whole thing next week because I really want to go into some spots. Welcome to God's camp. Dan, you ready? Another place, another level another dimension don't ever think you've arrived pride is so sneaky oh pride is so do you know that pride caused Satan to leave heaven pride is so deceptive don't ever say not me always say yeah me me that's me don't ever look at that message and go that's somebody no pride is so subtle it's arrogant it's high minded it's so ooh it's religious it always makes you feel better than. Don't, don't, don't engage with pride. Let, let pride be broken. And I'm telling you, man, Jacob was like a real pastor. Don't leave me until you speak to me. And we got to get back to some real authentic. In worship, God, we come to worship you. We come to church hungry. We're coming early. We're coming to encounter you. Pray for your family. Pray for your home in a real way. And I have points about what I want to say. But notice this, he would not let God go until he blessed him. But God blessed him, but he kept the limp. Walking with Jesus, you'll always remember who you were, how frail you are, and where you're going. Embrace your humanity. Embrace your weakness. It's okay to walk with Jesus and realize I once was, I once was, but now I am. It's okay to remember, remember what you're not without him and to be changed. I once was a manipulator. I once was a conniver. I once, but I've been changed now. And now he's living and I'm dying and I'm growing. That's the process of walking with Jesus. Oh Lord. Bless me. Oh, Lord, come again. Touch my family again. Oh, Lord. Open my eyes of understanding. Can you hear me? Can you hear? All I want to, I love you. And you know, stay in the camp, man. Stay in the camp, man. Whatever the camp, stay in the camp. Stay in the camp. Stay, stay, stay in the, stay, stay, stay. Stay in that place. Stay in that tension. Come on, let's go to a new place, a new level, a new realm, a new reality. Come on. You know why you come to Camp Land? 
because God wants to take you to a new place, a new level, and catapult you to. You come out of that place with a whole new anointing, a whole new revelation. My name's been changed. I want something fresh. Welcome, church. Welcome, preachers. Welcome, body of Christ. Camp land. Would you stand your feet today? Don't miss next week, God willing. Ashley, am I telling the truth? This is about a quarter of the message, is that right? Don't miss next week. Would you lift your hands all over heaven? Come on, lift your hand. This is part of it. This is part of it. Come on, this is part of it. This is part of it. It's part of singing. It's part of sir. It's part of just saying, Lord, I'm opening. I'm opening to you. I'm opening. I'm opening. My problem's not just with man. That's not. I know it. I know it. I know it. We battle not against flesh and blood. We don't battle against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle here. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. Come on, lift your hands all over this room. your spouse it's not just your father-in-law mother-in-law your job it's not just the government because it's easy to blame shift everything else because sometimes God wants to get a hold of you don't blame shift everything on everybody else it starts it starts it starts right at the pulpit it starts in the church it starts in us it starts in you I want to encourage you this week Get alone with God. Surrender at Camp Land. Learn some new tricks and learn some new tools and let God do a powerful work. Next week, we're gonna bring this thing home of some powerful things that I see learning from there. How powerful things are. That we can come out with a limp, but an anointing. With a limp, but strong. With a limp, but powerful in God. Welcome to Camp Land. Welcome to God's Camp Land. I had so much fun today, man. I just did. I just, this is like my favorite day ever. I need you to put a smile on your face. I need you to put a smile on your face. I need you to put, I want teeth telling. I want you to put a smile. One more time, it's your breath. Let's push second service five minutes out. I don't want to leave. I don't want to go. I may start second service with second or tonight. I may just sit tonight. He wants to come back tonight just to see if you love God or football. Just to see who do you love? Who do you serve? Every eye closed just for a moment. I know that I know that I know through every function of today, the spirit of God was here. I know that. That's my confidence. Through the handshake, the parking lot team, coffee shop, children's ministry, the worship. I know. I know that I know and you're here today and you're Jacob and you've been running and struggling from God but today you got to submit and surrender to the Lord maybe you've been to church hung out know some Christianese but you are not saved you have not surrendered your life to Jesus if that's you real quickly just lift your hand up high say that's me thank you oh my gosh thank you thank you lift that high back there that's amazing lift it high 
beautiful, beautiful people come unto Jesus. Anybody else in the room? I see two hands. Powerful. Let the tears flow. Let it flow. That's the spirit of the living God touching your life. Anybody else in this room surrendering their life to Jesus? Beautiful Jesus. Whoa, Jesus, we love you. Another hand just went up. That's amazing. That's so beautiful. Let's say this together. Say, today, Jesus, I surrender my whole life to you. I repent of my sins. I renounce this world and Satan. I'm a child of the God. Fill me with your spirit. Baptize me by your spirit. Plant me in your house and use me for your glory. In Jesus' precious name. We have a wonderful team. We have a Bible for you. I want to encourage you to get part of Foundations class. I got friends waving somewhere around. They're in that right there. My friend Craig's in the back waving his hand. We have all this for you. We love you, church. Stay for 